Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. I want to get right into this because I believe that there's something that the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you guys. And I'm going to start off in Matthew chapter 23. And it says, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, starting at verse 1, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do. For they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Okay? Five says, everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels of their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogue. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi for you are for you have one for you. But you are not to be called rabbi for you have one teacher and you are all brothers and do not call anyone on earth father for you have one father and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt themselves will be, will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Now granted, when it says call no one father, the Lord is not speaking about your biological parents, like your mom or your dad, but there are people who are looking at their spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. This is not biblical. OK, there are a lot of people who would like to be exalted. They are about positions and who they're associated with and titles. And God is not this is not his way. Now, let's move to the next thing that I want to share with you. I'm going to go to Luke chapter 22. And in Luke chapter 22, there's a dispute among the disciples. There's a lot of things in Luke chapter 22, but we are going to start at. Um, 24 and it says and a dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest these are his disciples and they're having a little they're bickering about who's going to be the greatest so a dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest Jesus said to him the kings of the Gentiles lord over them and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater? It says, for who is greater? The one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is not the one who is at the table, but I am among you as the one who serves. You see that? So a dispute is arising among them. Who is the greatest? And Jesus says, the Gentiles do this. In other words, the, the people of the world and certain people will do this. They lord over others and call, call themselves to be the teachers and rulers of others. Okay, benefactors, they are the ones of authority over individuals. But the Lord says, but you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest and the one who rules like the one who serves. It means you're equal, regardless of what your position is, you're equal. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is not the one who's at the table, but I am among you as one who serves. Shoulder to shoulder. That's why the word of God says, uh, take my yoke upon me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Lord is right there next to us as we're growing and as we are moving forward and being transformed in him. There are a lot of people who live a life, a lot of Christians, who are very much into branding. They like to brand themselves. 
They like to position themselves to be better than other people. They're believers that they will follow someone because they have a great following, because they have a big church, because of what they look like, because of who they're associated with. And they're going to look down and not be as receptive to someone who has a little church with one piano in it or someone who is unknown. And this is the very thing that God is calling us out of. Many of us has been called out of that. At some point, maybe we believe those things. We're looking at all the all the glitz and the glamour and the smoke screens and thinking it was normal. But God has a way of looking at those who nobody knows and nobody recognizes. Someone will go to someone's channel and they only have 10 people and you think, oh, they don't have anything to talk about. Let me find the one that has like 500,000 and you think, well, this person must be saying something because they're on this platform and because they know these people and because they're, they are, they're going, they're flying here and flying there and because they have a more, uh, a nicer intro and, and because they have awesome sound system, but that is not what God is looking at. And there's a reason why Jesus came in a simple and unassuming form. Because had he come in all his glory and splendor, oh, everybody would draw to him, but for all the wrong reasons. When he did his first miracle and they wanted to make him king, the Bible says he avoided them. And they were they were saying all these things about him and, and lauding him and cheering him on. But he was not moved by that. The Bible says he knew what was in the heart of man. And he avoided these individuals because he knew that they would try to make him a king because of what he did. But he had another mission. He had another purpose. And so there's a lot of people that's following the lights, the camera, the action. They're following the celebrity trail. They're following the who and who's. And they make that decision. But there are many preachers and pastors that have bowed to the kingdoms, bowed down before the devil for the glories and the kingdoms of this world. Oh no, they may not have literally bowed down to Satan per se in that sense, oh, oh great Satan, no. But they like his stuff. They accept his stuff. They, they know sin. They know what compromise is, but now they use the word of God for a loophole to do what they want to do. This is why I say all the time, it's so important that you sit and get the Bible and you read it page by page, read it in order, or you will be deceived by false teachers and false prophets. False teachers and prophets will be telling you the people that tell you the truth are the false preachers and prophets, and you'll be tempted to believe them because you're looking at everything that they have. But there are many pastors and preachers and teachers, they're being rewarded with the kingdoms and the glories of this world. You can read about that in Matthew chapter 4. Satan tried to offer these things to Jesus in the wilderness and he denied it. But there are many pastors today, they have fallen for stuff, hook, line, and sinker. And that is why these individuals will feel like you can't say anything to me. You have pastors who are, I guess they're considered celebrity pastors, okay? Idols. And so what happens is, if you say something to them, they'll look at you and say, oh, you can't say anything to me. You're not in the same circle because they have conformed to this world. Their standard is to say, what do you have? What do you own? If you have money like me, then you can talk to me. If you're in the same circles like me, then you can talk to me. If you have a church like me, then you can talk to me. Oh, all you're doing is this or that. No, nah, let me tell you what I'm doing. I, I, I always remember that. And so because they have adorned themselves in the things of this world, they think like the world because that's pretty much how the world is, okay? It's about what you have, what you do, your success. You're not going to just say anything to me. I'm, I'm higher than you. I make more money than you. And so that's what they're doing in the church. Not everybody, but a high percentage of them. There are only a few people. The Bible says many, many will be on that broad path. And only a few will find 
the path that leads to everlasting life. And there's a lot of people in church that's going to go into the depths of eternal damnation after they're done doing all this churching because they never knew God. And because they didn't think to themselves to sit down and read this Bible and be led by God, but instead they were following the Pied Piper because he or she is adorned in all the worldly things. He or she is in in these places where everything is dark and, and there's this illusion like at the movies. You ever notice you go to the movies, everything's dark and the big screen and you just captivate it. You sit there just eating popcorn. Not even paying attention, just eating, eyes fixed, and that's what people are doing. And so what happens, they begin to believe that they're higher. But let me show you, Jesus is tempted in the wilderness. And so I'll read it from verse 1, Matthew 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the Son of God... Tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this will I give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended to him. And attended him. All right, so I'm going to stop there. There's riches and kingdoms of this world and the splendor of it. And a lot of time you're seeing a lot of these preachers, they are there dipped and dripping in all of that stuff. And it looks good. And they say, this is God's blessing. This is God's wealth. Well, technically, you're being supported by a lot of people. Yes, they may have gifts and talents and abilities, but they would not have that type of money if they're not being supported by lots of people. I guarantee you, you don't even have to preach and teach. If you had no talent and everybody was giving you a bunch of money and all that stuff, you look just like them. Okay? But the Lord is saying that we are supposed to lay up our treasures in heaven, not in this world that's going to pass away. There's a lot of people, they are invested in this world. They're invested in the stuff. That's why they get so caught up in who you are. And what you have because they have conformed to this world. Because Jesus came in simplicity. But he was walking in the office of who he was. He could have been born into the house of a Pharisee or a scribe to a lawyer or someone high. But the Lord deliberately placed him. God deliberately placed him in a simple family, a simple setting for a reason. Because God are not, he's not looking for posers. He's not looking for people who, okay, I want to follow you because of what you have. But too often there are pastors, they are so prideful because they have fallen for the okie doke. And they think because their gift and their talents and abilities are still, are still operating, they believe that they're still of God. The most dangerous, most dangerous people that you're going to meet are people who sin and they know the Bible. A sinner that knows the Bible will run circle all around you, just like the devil does in Matthew chapter 4. He knows the word of God. He knows the situation. He knows that Jesus is hungry. So he's telling him, hey, first he says, just turn it to turn this to bread. And he realized that Jesus is giving him scripture. So then he says, for it is written. So he sees a situation. He knows how to feel out what's going on. And the whole thing, he's trying to tempt him to follow him and to do what he wants him to do. If you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, leads me to believe that he didn't know who he was. Why? He came in a different form. Right? And I'm sure the devil knew nothing. The devil is not all knowing. Because if he was all knowing, he would have known who he was. But he did not know who he is. 
because it wasn't for him to know. He was just going to see, according to Colossians chapter 2, how he was made a spectacle by the sacrifice of Jesus. And he brought all those dominion, all those principalities and powers under submission that we now have power over sin. But what is happening in churches today? The church is emulating the world. The church is saying, oh, we want to be like the world. We want to do stuff like them. That's why churches are dark now. I have a video called Turn On The Lights. And you'll see what that darkness and all that stuff is about. It has no business being in church unless they're doing a play. There is no reason for that type of scenario to be in the house of God. People may say, oh, I'm being a stick in the mud. I'm being a, you know, whatever. But the church is slowly but surely changing and conforming to the world to include the mindset. You can't sit with us mindset. You can't roll with us mindset. A lot of pastors are like that. Oh, we're the high-end pastor. We're the big-time pastors. We can't fool with y'all. So when you want to invite one of these pastors to your church, oh, you, you better be able to check off the blocks of what they need. You need to be able to fly me first class. You need to be able to fly me first first class. You need to have me in a five- to seven-star hotel. You can't do this if you can't provide this. You need to be able to uh, put my people in this hotel. I want to have this type of uh, rental car. I need this water. I don't drink regular water. No, no, they grew up drinking water out the faucet at home. But now they want this type of water and they want to be paid up front and this, that, and the other, other. And if you're not in, if you can't, if you don't have at least so many people, because they're already doing the math. So if you can't have these many people show up, then I'm sorry, I'm not coming. And depending on where you're at, they're like, Kansas, I'm not coming there. I'm not going there. No, no, thank you. I will not take that booking because they've conformed to the world. If you're correcting them about anything, they're either they're gonna want to check you out now. Oh, this person is over here, they're nobody, they're nothing, they can't tell me anything. Only certain people of a certain caliber can correct me because now they think that the Lord has elevated them to this point that they can only they can only associate with certain people and they can only be corrected by certain people, but that is completely unbiblical. Because Jesus allowed John the Baptist to baptize him and Jesus was a son of God. Jesus sat down on the ground with people and he was a son of God. His father created all things. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. And when he refused, at first Peter refused. He was like, no way I'm going to let you, you do that. And he says, well, if you don't allow me, then you are no part of me. We must be in a position to serve, to be in a position to receive and to serve. And no matter what your office is, you are still a servant. People don't understand. They're thinking worldly. So if someone has something higher, you're better. But God does not see it like that. You're not higher than this person. You're not better than this person. I just gave you this particular job to do. I put you in this particular position to do something, but you're not higher. That's why to every person, when he was, when we read the parable about the talents, one had five, one had three, one had one. But you know what? When the master came back, he asked each and every one of them, what did you do with your gifts and your talents? He did not tell the one with a five to go check on the ones who had three and one. He did not tell the one with a five to check on the one who had three and then the one who had three to check on the one who had one. The master went and spoke to each one of them individually. Because there's no one there who was higher than anyone else. It was about, have you done what I've told you to do? Have you done the will of my father? So while you're seeing people, they become delusional. And the gifts and the talents of God, they had it. And then things begin to change when they begin to see some of them were humble in the beginning. 
and they were led by the Spirit of God. But as they see the gifts and talents of God and then working in them and they get around other people, they allow themselves to be compromised. They had a moment where just like in Genesis chapter 3, oh, there's something you don't know. Let me show you something. The dominion and the power and the authority that Adam and Eve had somewhere along the way, even though she's in the midst of this beautiful garden, here is the serpent told her something and changed her whole destiny. And so there's a lot of pastors who have compromised themselves somehow by having a conversation with somebody who intercepted them, who they thought was a mentor, who is doing bigger things. And so they think, oh, let me follow this person because now they're looking at what they're wearing and what they're driving and who they're associated with. So let me follow this person because this person must be doing right because they have all these things. But Jesus came to the earth with nothing. Everything he had was within him, was within him already. But there are many people who are caught up, many pastors, they're caught up in appearance. And so they have long been under new management. They're under kingdom of this world management, riches of this world management. And so anytime you see any pastor that they can't, they are only, you can't talk to them unless you are somebody in their eyes. They can't take counsel from you or you ever think if because you're a pastor, you can't listen to somebody else because, oh, they don't make as much money as you and they're not in the same circles as you. You are carnal and that is not of God. Oh, you don't live. Oh, you, you live in this. Your house is small and I live in a mansion. You can't tell me anything. But there was a unknown prophet that came and spoke to a king. God specializes in people who, you know, nobody knew them. And there's something that we read about over and over again. There's a danger when people have been given a gift and a talent and an ability. There is a danger in them becoming prideful and beginning to sin against God. And what happens with a lot of these individuals, which is sort of worse, it sort of makes me think of actually the some of the grandsons and, and the, the, the men that followed after David you know, his grandchildren, children's children's children, children. Many of them were sinful. They were born into wealth and they only a few of them served God. From the moment Solomon had his son, Rehoboam, I believe, and going on and on, you will see most of them that came through and was on the throne were evil. And they, they met death. Certain things happened to them because of sins and also because of the sin of David, the sin of Uriah. You know, sometimes a lot of preachers love to tell you, oh, well, God's going to forgive you. But sin has residual effects. Stop comparing yourself to David because because of David's sin with Uriah, there was a perpetual uh, perpetual um, sword that went through his lineage. The Lord said, I will for Uriah's sake, you're going to pay for what you did. And you see that it happened. So don't take sin lightly to say, oh, you know, God's going to forgive me. God will forgive you, but Satan won't. And sometimes certain things, while God will forgive you, there are certain repercussions for stuff that you do. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. But people are following it. There are people that will sit in a ministry, regardless of the shenanigans that goes on in there, because they are, are they are completely enamored by this beautiful place and who's there and what celebrity goes there. And they want to be able to say, I go to church with Janet Jackson. I go to the same church with, uh, you know, these NBA players, I go to church. This person came to our church. They're happy about that. It has nothing to do with God. There are a lot of people that's going to stand before God and here depart from me. 
And they're going to be saying, Lord, Lord. The Lord says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. Surely people don't think the will of the fathers, or you're just going to church and sitting there listening to somebody talking to you all day. There's something you're supposed to be doing as well. But truly, guys, I just want to talk to you about the pride, the spirit of pride in many of these leaders who have conformed to the world. And what happens is their gift and their ability that God has given them, now perverted by the power of darkness, they're able to preach a riveting sermon and talk circles around your head and convince you to eat this fruit just like they did, just like the serpent did when Janu- in, in uh, Genesis chapter 3. There are lots of representatives of the serpent. There are a lot of representatives of the dragon. There is there are many there are many representatives of Lucifer in church. And they're being rewarded with the kingdoms and the glories of this world to make them appear to be in right standing with God. The Bible says there's a light that is in fact darkness. And you see a lot of masqueraders around here and how you know you're going to know by their fruit. You can't talk to me. You can't touch me. You can't come near me. That's not how Jesus was. You can't sit with me. You can't hang with me. You got to pay me. You got to give me money. You got to make sure I'm good. You, That's not how Jesus was. And they'll say, well, the Lord has blessed me. The Lord is not going to bless you at the expense of anyone else. He gave you hands and feet and a brain. You can get a job just like everybody else. Oh, I have to, I have to, no, you can assign other people to do stuff. You don't have to do everything by yourself. And some people were just never called. And some people God called you, but he did not tell you to open this big old coliseum that's out of control, that you can hardly be home, that you are unreachable. And most importantly, guys, I want to tell you, those of you, you may be, you may have a small church, a small ministry. You're not any less. And when you're, you know, you may be trying to, The Lord may put it on your heart to to speak a word to someone or they don't want to hear it because of who you are. It's okay. You have been obedient and you have spoken what God said. Any pastor that will not hear you because they don't know you or who's your covering. Have they lost their mind? Who's your covering? Uh, It don't get no better than God. I dare not open my mouth and blaspheme and call the name of a mortal man as my covering over the Lord, God in heaven. Because above him, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At his name, there's no greater. So how dare I come and tell you, oh, this person's my covering. No man shall be my covering. And all this will be people, people who are lost. I, I will have some sympathy there. They'll think, oh, you're being rebellious. But if you read your Bible, page by page, you see the truth. I too used to be thinking, oh, this person's my covering. No, they're not. They have to pee. God don't have to pee. He's my covering and he suffice and he's all I need. And if you read your Bible, you'll understand that there's no greater covering than Christ. And there's no one else that can fill in with that. Most of these people, they're not praying for you. They're not thinking about you after church. But they do that to keep people cowering and scared. So they keep coming in church and taking care of them and filling up their spiritual piggy banks. Whoever you are and whoever you are listening, I want you to continue to move forward in Christ. Stop seeing yourself as grasshoppers because people have a large following and they have all these people. They're not greater than you. And maybe I'm wrong for thinking that I may respect people, but I don't look at someone and say, oh, this person's higher than me. I'm less than because they have stuff. None of these things that they have matter. Yes, God may bless you and give you nice things. There's nothing wrong with that. But when that stuff gets to your head, it is an indication of the condition of their spirit that they can be brought down for. They're like Esau. They're going to give up their birthright. They're going to give up their eternal birthright for this piece of bread of a world that they're in conforming to stuff and going to lose eternity. 
And so it gets to their head and they don't know how to act. And so if you speak the word, they're looking at you, oh, oh, oh who are you with? Who is your affiliations? Who, who, oh, who, oh, who, oh, 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 oh. And then they can tell you, oh, I belong to the Dr. Jesse, Raphael, and Donatello, Leonardo Ministries. Okay. I belong to the boss who's over all of them. I'm not saying that we are not able to be, te to be taught or to be able to, to take counsel. But what we will not do is put our salvation in the hands of God. Jesus has... Correction, I meant to say we cannot afford to put our salvation in the hands of man. Let's continue. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. People want to tell you, well, Moses was leading people. Moses didn't want to do that. And he did. And if you read your Bible in order, you will see that he was not lording over those people. As a matter of fact, Moses got in trouble and was not able to go into the promised land because of how he's, he's, he allowed his anger and his frustration to cause him to, to break, the, break the tablets. Well, no, he got a chance for that, but he did something else. He got mad, his anger. You see, when you think that you can just pop off and do whatever you want to do because of your position, instead of saying, God, I will deal with this, you will lose out. I want to believe that he was rewarded regardless. I believe that he was, but he was looking from a distance as they went into the promised land. And their pastors, nothing like Moses, because Moses was very humble. They're very haughty and they, they have the big head and there are people who just think, you can't say anything to me because of who I am. That's good for you to think, but I'm going to say what God says. You need to say what God says to them, whether they accept it or not, shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. Just because they have big houses and big cars, just because they are on uh, um, spiritual support, everybody's giving them their money and all of that or whatever they're doing. It does not mean that they're necessarily called by God. Especially when they begin to compare themselves, especially when they begin to speak a certain way, especially when they you're seeing them being clouded. They're running around in this world, this temporary world, feeling elevated because of a jacket that they have on and because of a car that they drive and because of the neighborhood that they live in and because of what they are wearing on their feet and because of who they know. But all of it is temporary. They're putting all their eggs in a basket with carnality and men whose whose very heartbeat is in the hand of God and they've lost focus on that so they scoff at you and they they say whatever because they have carnal reinforcements but I want you to continue to keep your eyes on God and keep your eyes on this word so that you do not begin to lose hope that you do not because a lot of these these some of these men and women that you're seeing here they heard the voice of God they heard the voice of God telling them don't do this don't join with these individuals and you know what they push past that discomfort they push past the voice of God till now they don't hear it anymore now they're hearing a different voice all of a sudden God is saying all right I know that I told you not to do this but okay we're gonna work on this no they're being deceived. And I thank God for how he has made me because I don't care about being accepted. It's nice, but I don't care. I don't think anybody, I don't care who they are, they're not better than me. I'm not better than them. I'm not obligated to just listen to you because you have a lot of money and you're on TV. So what? That means nothing to God. If it's all about money and if, 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 if a person tells you that you're not worthy to speak to them because of how much money or how little money you make, then it's safe to say that most of these pastors then are not fit to speak to, let's say, a very wealthy billionaire. Only a few people can actually maybe witness to someone like Elon Musk or witness to like a sheik in the Middle East. And let's be honest, a lot of people, a lot of these 
pastors that even the ones that are billionaire is just a few i think it's just maybe one or he might be a, a multi multi multi-millionaire they they have not earned their money the way like maybe elon musk have or the way of some of these um sheiks who own property in dubai most of the pastors that have billions now or even multi-millions is because people are giving them money. Whereas these men, they come from old money and they work in and they have oil and they have property and they went to school and they had a hard life and then they're making money based on their own talents. So still different. Should Elon Musk and these individuals say, get out my face. You come in here with your uh, bag of hospitalities catered, you know, courtesy of the poor thinking that you're like us because really these individuals these pastors that say they're millions they sit at the table with these men and they really pull out what they're talking about they're not gonna have nothing where are you getting your earnings from oh you know I, I get a couple millions from my book and where's the rest coming from ah oh, the church really you think you're going to be able to impress the people but then they're going to be saying oh well you know the holy ghost and da 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 they're not trying to hear that So basically, you over here scamming people. That's exactly how it's going to seem to these type of people. So should we say you, millionaire pastor, you, billionaire by way of the community pastor, um, are you, should we say you're not worthy to even get the audience of like a Elon Musk or, you know, really, really rich men in the Middle East? Because truth to be told, you're not on their level. Oh, well now you're going to back up and start talking about, well, I'm sent to the power of God. Then why wouldn't you not listen to somebody who is coming to you in the name of God, who does not make the same amount of money as you? All the hypocrisy is pungent. But we should not be surprised with this behavior because the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Don't be impressed by people and stuff and what they have. A lot of people, they're getting the temporary, the temporary gifts. They're getting the temporary rewards in this earth. And their behavior shows you see the people they're running with. They're trying so hard to be like the world. Look, 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 we're like you. Let us hang out with you, please. But you being able to stand on your own. And even if God blesses you and brings to these individuals, you will make the difference. A lot of these individuals, they're not going to say stuff. And you know, because I've seen too many pastors who supposedly are celebrity pastors. When they sit down in front of the man. When they sit on CNN, when they sit on Oprah, when they sit on Larry, um, Larry King, these shows that used to be, when they're asked direct questions about salvation and holiness and certain lifestyle, oh, they're up there hemming and hawing. Oh, well, you know, and well, God said, and you know, God doesn't say, yes, he does read your Bible. Why? They can't bite the hand that's feeding them. They have conformed to this world. They can't offend the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places because that's where they're getting their stuff from. There are many that's saying, Lord, Lord, that don't know God. There's many that's going to say, Lord, didn't we do all these great things in your name? And what is he going to say? I'll read it to you in Matthew chapter 7. It says... 13, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destructions, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. And it says in verse 15, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them, the stuff that they do. Now we all make mistakes. 
But these people, they will have a reputation. They're habitual sinners. By their fruit, you will know them. Do not pick grape. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Now, let me tell you something about trees. Does that mean that if you do something bad or you do something wrong, that you're overall a bad person? No. Just like just because you do something nice today does not mean overall you're a nice person. There's people who do nice things and they're mean. So I grew up in Jamaica. My grandmother had a guava tree and she had a tamarind tree and she, she all of that, right? But even a tree that's healthy, every now and then there's a fruit on it that's just not good. You can't eat it. It's got a worm in it or something like that. And I used to be a little tomboy. So I climb up the tamarind tree and I sit in the tree and picking stuff off the tree and eating it. Just sitting there swinging my legs. Looking at the top of my grandma's house from the tree. Okay? But those fruits, that was few. Because most of it was was like my the guava tree, for example. There'll be some on there that's not good. But most of the guava tree that was right in my grandmother's front yard, most of the guava was ripe. So that's the difference. If you do something wrong, it doesn't mean overall you're a bad person. But if you're an habitual sinner, you live to sin and repent afterwards, you're a bad tree. These individuals are bringing forth bad fruit. There's some pastors and leaders that have a reputation. They're believers in Christ who have a reputation. People know them as a liar. People know them as bad temper. People know them as a promiscuous person. And I was looking at somebody that was saying, well, you know, oh, God's going to forgive me and everything. Um, yeah, he is. But he forgives you for a reason. You need to stop it. I hear people say there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You keep going. Stop stopping right there. It says who walks not after the flesh. You keep going down and it tells you how you can overcome that lust. A lot of reason why people are still falling into sin and doing stuff is because they're not disciplining their flesh. And they're not doing what God said to do. And they're not turning that plate over to fast. And they keep allowing themselves to take phone calls. They're still slip, slipping out the house. And they're not realizing that eventually you're going to run out of time and you're going to run out of chances. So the Bible says, do people pick grapes from thorn bushes? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit. Every good tree bears good fruit, but bad trees bear bad fruits. A good tree cannot bear good fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. These are people that just can't do right. And there's a other where because you're allowing God to change you because you're allowing God to, you're, you're allowing him to transform you. You're going to find that certain things you used to do, you're going to be uncomfortable with it. So every tree that bears good fruit, that bears not good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So by their fruit, you will recognize them. And the Lord says, in Matthew 7 and 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, this is prophecy, Lord, Lord, will we? did we not prophesy in your name? Just because you prophesied, you're not going to heaven. Did we not, in, in your name, did we not drive out demons? You can cast out demons and not enter into heaven. And in your name, perform many miracles, miracles, Anything does not get you into heaven. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. So you can be singing the praise of God and you can be preaching, you can be teaching. But if you are doing evil habitually, you're not going to heaven. And I want you to understand that there are a lot of pastors who are like that. They're preaching and they're teaching and they're doing all these things and they have the riches and the glories of this world and they're saying, God sent me. No, they're under new management. They're a part of the footmen for the Antichrist. And their job is to keep people blind and in the house of God, well, in a place that seems to be a house of God and it's not. 
They're in a mausoleum. Do you know how beautiful a mausoleum is? It's beautiful, but uh, it's holding dead bodies. It, they're there to rock you to sleep, keep you busy in the four walls, wee, doing all kinds of stuff, thinking you're, oh, yeah, we're doing this, and we got T-shirts on, and, blah, and still carnal. So when these individuals, you'll see them watch their fruit, listen to how they talk, listen, look at the smug expression on their faces, look at how they move. They can't move without somebody. Oh, oh my gosh. Let's keep them from, let's, let's oh, oh. why can't you walk by yourself? Because you've created a danger that you were never supposed to be and never supposed to create. We're elevating yourself higher than you should have been. Watch how they are. You can't speak to me because I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. You can't hang with me because I drive this kind of car. They've been sucked into this world. They've eaten the fruit. They've bowed down at the feet of Satan. And now he's appointed them as his false teachers and prophets because it is important to the devil to keep Anybody from truly giving their life to Jesus Christ, it is important to the devil that if someone gives their life to Jesus Christ, that they are intercepted and their light is put out in the church. It is important that they are religious and they are busy and there's a lot of lights and a lot of things to keep them occupied and to keep them following after the Pied Pipers call spiritual leaders to lead them straight into the depths of hell to keep them from walking in their destiny to keep them from walking in their calling to keep them from letting go of carnality and sin because they're being told it's okay it's okay as long as you come in here and you're singing and you're dancing and you're hucking and you're bucking and you give me your money you're going to go to heaven but if you're not reading your bible page by page and if you're not asking god to open up your heart and open up your mind so you can comprehend scripture you are going to end up in eternal damnation knowing why you're there stop playing around with these crazy pastors that's gone off their rockers many of them are out of line and out of position and no name folks nobody know that's speaking the word nobody's going to listen that's why they rejected Jesus who are you that's why when individuals will correct these pastors, they'll laugh and huh, who do you think you are? Just like the Pharisees and scribes. History is repeating itself. They behave the same way. And they'll call their powerful friends up to get rid of you. The Pharisees and scribes did that with the disciples. When they were there in a certain part teaching and they saw that the people were, were beginning to change and accepting the Lord and all this stuff. They got afraid. And so they went and they called their elites to make some moves. Threatened him. Didn't we tell, threatened Paul, threatened, threatened the disciples. Didn't we tell you not to talk about this Jesus? And they flogged them and they locked them up. Same thing going on. So guys, I'm going to stop here. I encourage you to continue doing what God has called you to do. I encourage you to continue to move forward in his name. I encourage you to realize that God is not seeing anyone as higher than the other. And you should not behave that way yourselves. You're not higher than anybody. Even the poorest person, you are not higher. Even if you're super rich, you're not. You just have a different role in life. But at the end of it all, we're all souls. Continue to be bold and do what God has called you to do. Spread the word. Do not be intimidated because of what someone looks like. Do not get intimidated by people who may laugh at you and say, oh, your channel is lame. You don't know this person. Why are you talking about this individual? You open your mouth and you speak what God has told you to speak. In Jeremiah, he told him, you need to speak what I tell you to speak. Regardless of what they say, regardless of what they look like, regardless of who thinks that you don't have any business saying this or saying that about this person, you're not rich enough to speak to this individual. Look at you with your half a closet and your you know, half a chair, your chair with three legs. Okay, 
Still do what God says. Because you know what? The kingdoms and the glories of this world is nothing. They have a they have a mirage. They they they're looking at what's temporary, locked up in this little globe called earth. But God has something so much greater. And the Bible says, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. So that means all this stuff that people are falling head over heels in love with, all these things that these pastors are willing to switch their souls out for. What God has for those of us who wait, we can't even imagine what that's going to be. And that excites me. I don't know about you, but it excites me. I'm like, what is it? Okay. A lot of these pastors have gone reprobate. Their minds have been seared with a hot iron. They've been listening to God for some point, hearing his voice, and they've ignored it. They override it. They may repent. They may cry by themselves, but they, they're in the circle now, and they don't know how to get out of it. And so they rather try to compromise with God. Lord, I know I'm, I'm not doing right here, but this is what I'm doing. They think they can bargain with God. But according to Romans chapter 1, these individuals, they now begin to take the truth of God and, and the tr taking the truth of God and holding it in unrighteousness. They know what is right, but instead they're worshiping the creature more than the creator. And they begin to continue to do certain things to the point that they are now, especially the prophets, they're moving into divination. They're moving into being able to tell people things by the same spirit that a medium and a, or a psychic will move into, will move by. But they keep saying, Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to stop here, guys. Many carnal pastors. And how are you going to know them? They are locked and loaded in the things of the world. And that's the thing that they use to measure themselves. Who is worthy to talk to me? Who is not worthy to talk to me? And be careful, YouTubers. Some of y'all do the same thing. You think you're better than someone. You go on someone's channel. What's the first thing? Oh, you look at their sub count. Oh, and maybe they hide their sub counts, but you can tell about what their sub counts are like based on their views. And so you will think you're better than somebody because you have some people. Or you will think you're less than and oh, um, because you, you only have two subscribers and this person has 200 or 2000 you immediately think oh i'm less than stop looking stop seeing yourself as a grasshopper you're not i'm not and i don't see myself that way it's not pride but i know who i am in christ i know that he came very plain i know he picked plain david he had naked adam walking around chose him made him <laughs> You see, he's chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And I'm one of the foolish things that he has, can, he has chosen. And the Lord came plain and unassuming. And he has specifically told us, just as I read you, let it not be one set among you that you're trying to lord over anybody. So when you see these people trying to lord over you, trying to tell you what to do, it is not of God. It is an unclean spirit because Satan likes bondage. Satan wants to force you. Satan wants to crush your head and make you submit. That's what he does. Not the spirit of God. So guys, I'm going to stop here once again. This video is an hour long, but I hope it does encourage you. And you know what? You can get a rise out of this, this scripture right now. But you know what? If you are not meditating on this word, and if you don't seek God out for yourself, this good feeling is going to wear right off. And you'll be right back to ground zero, looking like Oompa Loompa. All right, guys? All right. God bless.